Well, you can see I came out to my yard and there was a swarm hanging in that small tree right there, multi-floor rows and some privet and stuff. So I set a box next to it, just shook them out on the ground. And um, I don't know if they're gonna move in or not, we'll see. They, I'd say there's a really good chance that they will. I think they're also looking at a couple of my swarm traps, so I'm hoping that I will get them. But I've got uh, chores to do and I've got to pick the kids up, so I'll have to come back after dark and find them, just check on them. Um, it's supposed to rain tonight, so I cannot leave the lid on like it is now. It's, um, it's open uh, to give them easier access. So I'll have to come back tonight and move these guys if I've got them caught by then. So I came back to deal with this swarm. Um, I'm seeing what you don't want to see. I'll show you. So instead of moving into this swarm trap or this box, they have clustered on the outside of it. And I'm not real sure why, but we've got storms coming tonight and they really need to move in. There's the queen, come on girl. seen the queen twice, just right down here. I wish to goodness that she would go inside. There she is, right there. Small queen, that may be a virgin. No, I think she's mated. Get down. Quit climbing the front. Right, I'm going to take that entrance reducer out completely while she's away from it. Or at least swing it out so they've got better access. If I had a queen clip and could catch her, I'd put her inside. <laughs> Let's go see if we can find one. Always be prepared. Uh, yeah, that's not my motto. <laughs> Need a queen clip. It's always not on you. If we can catch her, we should be able to catch this swarm. There she is. Nope, she came out. Nope, she's right there. Just needs to go back in. There go. Oh yeah, I've got her. I've got her in there. Now... We will put her in this hive. All right, guys. So Queen hopefully is inside. Um, I think I was successful in getting her in there getting a release from the clip. I do have the good lid on, so they're not gonna leak tonight. I'll put a block on top of that. And hopefully the rest of these bees are going to march right on in. The entrance is pretty well open. And with queen inside, they should go on in there. So I had planned to move them tonight, but they didn't move in like they were supposed to. So uh, I have to leave them. Let them figure this out.
So that's this one. Uh, this is an aggravating swarm catch. <laughs> they don't always go smoothly. And uh, you know, the, the two that I've caught by hand earlier in the week, uh, they went really smooth. They, they did what they were supposed to. Uh, this one did not and that's you know that's fine i think i've got them now um i think they're going to get out of the weather and be okay that's that's the important thing i sort of prefer catching them in traps because they do all of this without me while i'm not here and uh, i'm pretty sure that i've got two that are in traps around this apiary uh, already and all, all i have to do to them is lock them up at, at night and move them um then get them started sorted out and started so i really like catching them in traps but when they're hanging close to the ground you know if you can get them in a box it's close to a sure thing so i like doing that i'll probably see you guys in the morning well, good morning folks it is sunday april the 11th it rained all day yesterday or all night the night before it was dry yesterday and i need to get this swarm moved i've actually got three to move this morning so i'm here early it's about 6 a.m low 50s and i'm going to try to get them moved and locked in while it is still dark before they get really active. So I've got three swarms caught. Two of them are up in trees still. And I need to get all three of them moved today. You can see what I did to lock these guys up. I've just got a piece of eighth inch hardware screen that I've been into that shape. And it has cut the exact width of my reducer entrance. And it just squeezes in there. And that'll, that'll hold them. really do enjoy these entrance discs. When it comes to moving bees, that is so convenient. So convenient. And we're just going to gently lower this. Well, sort of gently. Good spots are often good spots year after year. This spot caught two swarms last year and it's gotten one this year so far. Of course, last year they were not my bees. This year I believe they are my bees. That's okay, still got them. Hopefully you can see how that worked. Woo! 
Three on the ground, soon to be in the truck. Hard part is over, that was a success. I can hear humming behind me. They're not really happy. I've got bees trying to get out the entrance at this one. I don't know about this one. I've seen bees flying in and out during the day, so I think I've got a swarm in there, but we'll see. Anyway, this, uh, this early morning exercise was a success. I'm hotter than I thought I would be. <laughs> um, I've got to go get these guys reoriented at a new, new yard. So I'll take you along for that and show you how I get them set up. Um, I need to get this bottom off of this one and pull the spacers out of these two or they will start building comb off the bottoms. And um, I'm gonna leave them over there for a week or two and get some sugar in them, some syrup. So um, I need to get them started right. So I'll have to get them situated when I, when I drop them off. And I need to do that before church. So we gotta get moving. All right guys, so I got the bees moved out here to this location, uh, spread apart so that they can reorient. And I know I've got bees in these two, I can hear them. I can't hear anything in that far one, so I'm gonna check them. I've got to release them off uh, from the entrance. I've got their entrances blocked, but uh, they should be pretty spicy right now. They don't like cold, they don't like being jostled, they don't like being messed with. So I would expect to have heard bees in this uh, this box over here. I know that there was a swarm in it earlier this week. Um, they could have absconded. I don't know. But as of a couple couple days ago, they were uh, they were there. So we'll we'll take a look and see what's up. Yeah, this isn't looking good. I think we've got a blank here. Oh, they're here. <laughs> they fooled me. They're just some really quiet bees. All right, girls. All right, I'll, uh, I'll put you back together. That's a pretty small swarm. And I'm just gonna leave them alone until this afternoon. They will wake up. It's in the low 50s right now, and I don't want to work them. So I'll come back this afternoon. All right, so that's it for now. It is, like I said, it's in the low 50s. I don't want to get into these hives right now, especially since the bees are not oriented to their new locations. I'm gonna let it warm up, uh, let them get some flight in, figure things out. I'll come back this afternoon, pull the spacers, get them on the bottom boards I want, and the top lids and, and all that stuff, get some feed in them. I'll probably leave them here for a week, um, maybe two weeks, and then I'll come get them and move them home, so. This is just an easy way to move them. You can try to pile brush and um, you know sticks and weeds and all kinds of stuff in front of the entrance and that will force them to reorient. And swarms are more malleable on that stuff than established hives, but this is a sure thing for reorientation. And um, I had to come over here anyway to check swarm traps um, and they were, you know, my, my friend was nice enough to let me stash these hives here for a week. And um, it, it's just an easy solution for me. Uh, it's a sure thing. Easy on the bees. So, 
I think it'll work well. You can see guard bees in the entrance there. So I need to get them an entrance reducer. Hopefully I've got one. <laughs> I think I do. It'll work for an entrance reducer for now. I think I'll get them a little bit of smoke uh, just because they did start to come at me some. See the swarm lure there. I'll take that back with us and reuse it. This swarm is one, two, three, four, about four frames. So I think I'll leave them just the size they are. Give them a touch of smoke. They're getting their heads up just a bit. So I'll leave them just the size they are. I'm gonna pull two frames out and drop a feeder in. I want them to know that they've got some feed here. That will certainly help to calm them down. Now I will smoke them down a little bit. Well, they're hungry, they're jumping on that. All right, that's really all I want to do with them. They've got a lot going on in their lives right now. And I don't want to mess them up any more than I already have. I'm not really messing them up, I'm just stressing them. And uh, when you stress colonies, strange things can happen. They can blame the queen for it and kill the queen and it's all sorts of weird things can happen. Just want them to be nice and calm and happy. This is the big swarm that I caught. I had so much trouble catching. So we'll finally get a look at them. A lot of bees, a lot of bees. Oh yeah, a lot of bees, goodness. That's a full box there. They're gonna need another box. Okay. Well, that tells me what I'm gonna do with them. All right. So what we're gonna do with these is set them there for a minute. Get a new bottom board set up. Good enough. Find my hive tool. Pop them open. Get the second box put on top.
feeder installed. Better check my spacing here. There we go. Looks beautiful. Now the reason I'm adding a second box here is just because there are so many bees in there, I don't want them to feel crowded. If they did feel crowded, they could decide to go find a bigger house to live in. That's called an abscond. It does happen with swarms. No bees down below. Now this hive is not getting any sunlight. So it could be that they're just not awake and up and at them yet. I don't know. They are weak enough that I am going to put them on the, the small opening here. Very small swarm. Pretty feasible that this would be a virgin queen. Which guys, I've got no problems with a virgin queen in a swarm. I watched a, a video by Bob Benny one time. Um, I'll try to link it if I can find it. But he was saying that the absolute best queens come from swarms. That uh, hives only make swarm queens when things are just right in the hive. They've got to really be happy with the way things are going. And I tend to agree with that. Uh, so swarm queens, virgins that you catch in a small after swarm, they could be the, the best queens that you find. Um, you know, they, they could be the queens that have been fed royal jelly right from the very beginning. They were the eggs that were just exactly the right size and age and, and all this. You know, the bees know how to make queens. And when a strong hive wants to make queens, well, they can make really good ones. So there could be a, a tremendously good queen in here, but she didn't attract enough bees to go with her because she was a virgin and she didn't have a lot of pheromone. But if she pulls through this and they're able to turn their population over, um, they could be wonderful. And plus she's out here, so if she's not mated yet, I'm getting into a, a different genetic population with her being in an out yard, so pretty, uh, pretty optimistic about it. It could be a really good thing. Now we'll come back and see these guys in about a week, and uh, the next thing I'm going to show you is a follow-up on the two swarms I caught in my last video, which was a double swarm catch. Um, I'm going to check in on those two and probably give them some more feed today, but I want to see how they're doing if they've started drawing comb and, you know, and things like that. So we'll, we'll see where their progress is. All right, guys, so this is the first of the two swarms that I caught last week. Uh, they have been in here about a week with a gallon of sugar syrup. And it looks like we got a, we got bees, so that's good. And they've got their heads up. They're a little runny. They don't seem very calm. Ooh, lots of bees. That is a lot of bees. All right, so let's judge condition here. Uh, they're almost done with their syrup, but not quite. Let's see where the nest is. Yeah, they are runny. That can be a, an indication of a queenless situation for them to be that runny. Swarms are generally very calm. So their mood seems a little temperamental. Uh, that could be weather, could be a few other things. That's something you wanna note though. And we've got drawn comb here. So they have been working take a look at this and they're filling that up with nectar and pollen 
and we've got some nectar and a little bit of pollen there. The next frame is also getting drawn. So they're doing some work. What I really want to see is eggs. I want to see evidence of a laying queen in here. That will tell me I can quit worrying about these guys and just feed them. We've got nectar. Uh-oh. We've got a queen cell, emergency queen cells going in right there. So that's not a good sign. There's a few eggs in there. Um, looks like they started a queen cell. Not real sure what's going on there. If it was a virgin, they could, I don't know, there's a lot of things that can happen. It can take a virgin queen time to get back. I don't know if you can hear this or not, but you can hear the roar. That's a sign of an unhappy hive. I've had some queenless hives that sounded like that before. All right, so assessment on this hive and what I'm going to do about it. I'm going to feed it and look at it in another week or two weeks. Um, if they are going to have a queen, it will happen in the next week or two. So the easy thing to do is to wait, and often that is the correct thing to do with bees, is to just wait and have some patience. A lot of bees up top here. This was a much larger swarm than that last one. That first one covered two and a half or three frames. This one was about six or six and a half. They've already got their inner cover glued down. And stuck to something. Well, they had it glued to the top bars. Wow, they've got a lot of comb built in here already. See a little nectar there. Nectar and pollen here and we've got eggs. We've got a laying queen in this hive. So this one is viable. It really wouldn't surprise me to see her on here. A lot of eggs. So that, uh, that queen is really taking command of this space. She's owning it. And she's asking them for more comb. And they are building it. So that's good. That's great. They are really off to a positive start here. Let's just set this box off real quickly. Okay, we have got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight drawn frames down here. Uh, they're working on this one. They don't like this drone comb. I'm going to checkerboard it. I'm shocked that they've drawn this much comb this quickly. They're, they're going to need a box. That's shocking. They've only been here a week. They've nearly drawn out two mediums. That's incredible. So by they've started drawing the side of this uh, of this frame here, but they haven't started on either side of this. So by putting this one in the in between two frames that are being worked, that will make them want to draw it. And we'll take their feeder, move that up to what is going to become the new top box. I will checkerboard 
one of these frames in. each side here center these make sure our B space is good and we're going to take this box so I would normally pull drawn frames up into this box but I really think these guys want to expand and, and grow um, enough that I'm not going to have to do that. They, they want to move, they want to grow. So I'm not going to worry too much about uh, pulling frames up. I'm just going to pour them some feed. And then I'll drizzle some on the top bars of the frame so that they know it's there. While that's filling up, we'll take a look at their oil tray. Very clean. No hive beetles yet. That's good. I also don't see any Varroa. No wax cappings, which you would expect. They've not been through an emergence. So they look really clean, really good. I'll dribble this up here, let the bees know it's here. So guys, I'm really proud of this swarm and how well they're doing. I'm shocked at how much comb they've been able to draw so quickly. Um, but as proud as I am of them, it's also sort of a disappointment because this swarm came from one of my hives and losing that much bee power, that much girth from a hive just destroyed the honey production potential of whichever hive that might have been. Um, so that's a little disappointing, but I've got really three goals this year. I want to make as much honey as I can to cash flow my expansion. I also need to expand. I want to get my hive counts from nine to somewhere between 25 and 30. And I need to draw a lot of comb. I need extra comb uh, next year. Hopefully I could get to at least uh, two drawn supers per hive. Now I don't know that I'll get there, but that's my goal. Um, so with those goals, well, I'm going to make as much honey as I can. Some of my hives are looking really good. Uh, this swarm, yeah, it's a, it's a loss in my production yard, but it's also a new hive. So it's a gain in my second goal of expanding. And it's also a gain in building comb. They've, they've almost completely drawn out two full mediums already. And that's in a week. Um, that's great. You know, that's wonderful. So I guess the lesson there is don't get disappointed in what the bees hand you. You've got to be adaptable and work with them. Um, you know, work with what they give you and make the best of it. Guys, I appreciate you watching. If you've enjoyed the video, please give it a like. Um, while you're at it, subscribe to my channel and hit the bell for notifications, get notifications of new videos. Uh, all of those things really do help get my videos out on YouTube and it forces YouTube to show my videos to people who are interested in bees. And my goal with the channel is to help encourage people get into beekeeping and to help new beekeepers to be successful. Um, I, that's really what I want to do and I'm trying to do that with this channel. So I appreciate you doing those things. It really does help spread the word and get the message out. Um, I appreciate it and I'll see you next time.